dive into the thought bubble. A long time ago, humans lived up in the sky in what we now consider heaven. The daughter of their great chief became very sick, and they were unable to cure her. In the village was a great tree on which grew the corn that had fed all of the people. One of the chief's friends had a dream in which he was told to tell the chief to lay his daughter beside the tree and dig it up. The chief did as the dream said. And while this was going on, an angry young man came along. The angry young man didn't have the best bedside manner. He pointed out the tree, provided the fruit which fed the people, and gave the sick daughter a push with his foot. She fell through the hole that had been left when the tree had been dug up. The young woman fell into this world, which at the time was all water. On this water floated ducks and geese and all the other water birds. As there was no earth on this water at the time, there was no place for the falling woman to land, so the birds joined their bodies together into a sort of duck island where the falling woman landed. After some time, the birds grew tired and asked, who would care for the woman? The great turtle took the woman. And when he grew tired, he asked who would take care of her. They decided to prepare land on which she would live, the earth. The toad, after some convincing, dove to the bottom of the primal sea and collected soil which was placed on the broad carapace of the great turtle. It increased in size until it provided the land to accommodate all the living creatures. Thanks, Thought Bubble, and nice work, Waterbirds. So there's a lot more to the myth than this, but it captures the key elements of the Earth Diver story. Although it has some things in common with other creation myths we've seen, especially the idea that the world began as water, the relationship between human beings and animals is quite different. For one thing, far from being dumb creatures waiting to be named and tamed by man, these animals can talk, think, deliberate, and plan animal empowerment. They also have emotions similar to the ones we feel, especially getting tired and bored of a tedious task. Think about this, the next time you watch a horse pull a cart, or you're trying to entertain your cat by waving that feathery thing in front of them. I'm telling you, they're getting fed up. Just as important as being given real agency in this creation story, though, it's the animals who both save the human's progenitors and create our home. Without the helpful turtle and the brave toad, there would be no land to live on and also no earth to grow food. The creation of the world requires animals, and thus it is crucially important to be grateful to them. Some of you might be saying, wait, this sounds like a stereotypical view of Native Americans, like they have some mystical connection with nature and that we should look to them for a way to understand how to better live in harmony with it. And you would be right. That is a cultural stereotype, one that has often been uncritically linked with the idea of Native American peoples as being primitive. But I will say, maybe in comparison to the other stories we've heard so far with all of the vomiting and wars and the eating of children, it's kind of nice to think of the universe as a place of collaboration and not one of acrimony. Except, of course, for the jerk who kicked the daughter down the hole. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next week.